Come on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The biggest thing for me, while well, I haven't bought the Pearl yet, is just the... What's up guys, it's your boy Fast Lane D and today <laughs> we're out here on this Aprilia RS 660. Now the crazy part is, is I spent a lot of time with this bike before and I recorded a whole video series on it, but I didn't like how the audio turned out. First things you'll notice is kind of the Brembo brakes down there. My favorite feature thus far, well two favorite features, cruise control. I don't think there's another 600cc motorcycle out there with cruise control stock and it has the GPS in there. This one, K. Okay. God. Oh, oh, oh. My goodness dude this is just holy cow so i never posted it so this is actually my second time getting to spend some time with this bike and i really do enjoy it like this is a great bike it looks good i love the fact that it has the red wheel up front and then the black wheel in the back it looks very similar to the rs v4 it's kind of hard to tell the difference and i'm sure all the aprilia purists are going crazy right now but it has a very similar headlight fairing in my opinion coming from a non-aprilia rider this one doesn't have anything done to it it has a stock exhaust like everything is just bone stock on this bike so take everything i say with a grain of salt but we got to return this to the owner so enough talking let's get this cold start going bay Be a racer. <laughs> the most dinky cold start ever, man. All right, let's cue the cinematic shots that I took last time on this bike. Man, and we're in a beautiful sunny California. We got the coast right here. Look at this view, man. What? <laughs> Insane that people live like this. Like people live here and this is their view every single day. That's just uh, one day fast lane gang, one day. Wow. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. But I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna keep this review super long. This time that I've had this bike, I didn't get to do like the canyon twisting and all the stuff I did last time I rode this bike. So I'll throw in some clips of me doing that so you guys can see. I actually did get to ride this bike in the twisties of California up in the hills. This trip, I did a bunch of highway riding so I really didn't get to stretch the legs of this bike. But this is a good bike, man. This is the ultimate commuter bike in my opinion. Look at this. This is such a California view right here. <laughs> But the ultimate commuter bike, one, because it's very comfortable. Like it has an upright seating position. Like you're not leaned over like your typical 600, like an R6 or a ZX6R or something like that. You're a lot more upright as far as seating position is concerned. Like on an R6 or something, I'd be a lot more like here. Versus on this bike with my arms straight, like I'm up here. And you're not perfectly sitting upright, but just slightly lean forward. Which is still good for if you want to hit the twisties. Like you're still kind of in that tucked position. Like you can easily tuck on this bike. Versus like, I don't know, like a naked bike. It might be a little bit 
tougher to tuck on something like that. So if you want that blend of being able to commute and hit the twisties and have some fun, like I'm not saying naked bikes can't hit twisties. Like there's some really fast guys on like super motos, which is even more upright. But I'm just saying it'd be easier to tuck on something like this if you're doing something that requires you to tuck. Or even highway riding because you, a lot of those naked bikes you get hit in the chest with so much air, man. Also, the features that I've really enjoyed using is the fact that their Proya app connects to your phone, and so you can have turn-by-turn -turn navigation pop up on this screen, which has been really useful for me because I'm not from San Diego. So getting around, I have to map everywhere I'm going. So being able to see that display on the screen has been really, really nice, man. Got a little ZX6R action, 636. And like when you're commuting and actually like using your bike as like a road bike, something you use every day and not like a race bike, like the little things like that really make a difference. Also the cruise control on here is phenomenal, man. Like easy to use, very intuitive. And yesterday I rode back from LA to San Diego. It's about a two hour ride. And I just had it on cruise control the entire time it was chilling and it like that like really made a difference as far as like just like fatigue like i wasn't nearly as fatigued as i would be just because i was chill like, i didn't have to think about what speed i was at or the throttle input i'm giving it like i just set it and i was just sitting upright chilling for most of it now this bike is pretty comfortable i wouldn't say it's like the most comfortable but it's not uncomfortable and it's got enough power to get you around on the street like you're not gonna have any situ like any problems or at any point feel like this bike is underpowered unless you're riding with people that ride on thousand cc bikes like yesterday when i was riding with all the guys with like the super legera and the s1000 double r like the r1 like yeah this bike felt underpowered because those guys boys were going crazy which if you're doing highway riding then maybe i'm talking like top speed highway riding like like it's not slow though like like it's still got plenty of power <laughs> plenty of power is it what i'm used to no but y'all gotta take that with a grain of salt because I also have an H2, an R1M, and a Panigale V4 SP2. Like those are all very, very high horsepower bikes. But if you're just looking to get around, like I said, for a commuter bike and something you can ride on the track and in the canyons and have fun with, like this is a good bike. And the thing with lower horsepower bikes like this is that you really have to like ride them. Like the, it's almost like the 1000 CC bikes kind of make you lazy because you don't have to downshift as much or like put in as much work to have access to the power. Like the power is just given to you at all times on a 1,000cc bike. This bike, I'd say... Like 9,000 RPMs, this bike comes alive. Like as soon as it hits 9K, it's like, all right, let's go. Until then, I feel like it's kind of like lag, 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 lag. But look, you got plenty of passing power for doing stuff like this, man. Now, as far as reliability, the owner of this bike said he hasn't had any issues with it. And this bike has a little over 10,000 miles on it. Now, he also has a Tuano, a Proya Tuano, that has 2,000 miles on it with a blown engine. So, <laughs> I mean, and it's the same exact engine that's in this bike, it's just detuned a little bit. So, I, I can't really speak on the reliability aspect. The biggest thing for me, while I haven't bought the Prilia, is just the dealership support. So, if you have like an Aprilia dealership close by that you trust and like, then and you really want one of these, then I say go for it. If there's one like an hour or two away, then uh, I'd maybe look at some other options. And for me, there's not even one close, like not even within an hour. So for me, it's not really worth it if I wanna get anything done, having to take it an hour one way, an hour back. Like that's just, that's too much. This thing's 
nice, man. I like how it, like the the tachometer is like that. It's like okay. a sweet little bike it feels so light like when I was throwing around in the corners last time I was here like it just felt so good like look at this what <laughs> this thing wants to lean it, this thing wants to lean boy come on Come on, I'll tell you. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, shit. If you're looking for a bike to kind of like put around on the city with, that's comfortable, that you can still do track days with, do some canyon carving with, that's not going to feel underpowered or make you, make you feel like uh, there's something left to be desired, this is a good bike. Look, 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 I'll use, the cruise, I'll use the cruise control here. Boom, boom, set, 66. We're chilling, chilling. And if I just want to go up a little bit. Let's go to 70. Oh yeah, look, easy money. <laughs> oh, I love it. I was chilling last night, it was so nice. Just like this, the whole ride home. Yeah, it's got the looks. I can tell it wants to like if you put an exhaust on this thing, this thing would sound really good. I've never heard one with an exhaust, but I can just tell from revving the stock exhaust, which I'll do once we get off at the exit up here, that it'd be a really good sounding bike, man. I'm flying! I'm flying! Like that sounds pretty good without an exhaust. Look, 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 look. Want Celine, I get off the bike, one cheek off. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Come on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's go. Yeah, this is a sweet bike, dude. Woo. Yeah, and even at highway speeds, like it's not like the wind's tossing me around or anything. Versus like with something like a 400 or a 250, like you really feel like the wind throwing you around, man. This bike feels planted, even for a big guy like myself. Like I weigh 240, <laughs> this bike still gets up and moves, man. Now I will say the quick shifter on this thing is, like it could definitely be a lot better. Like it's not very smooth, like what? Okay, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me clarify. If you are at wide open throttle, it's smooth. If you're not, it's very, like, it upsets the bike. So if you're like getting on it, on like a track or a twisty or like messing around with your buddies, like, it'll be smooth if you got that throttle just cranked. But if not, <laughs> it's very, very jerky. But the auto blips are very smooth, I will say that. Aprilia has the auto blips down. Come on, come on Aprilia, come on baby, come on, let's go! <laughs> and the best part about riding lower CC bikes like this is that you can have fun and hoon and not be putting a ton of people and yourself in a lot of danger. You know what I'm saying? Like if I just did that on my R1 or H2, like, <laughs> we'd be doing some crazy speeds for sure. Yeah, the downshifts are butter, man. Butter. You got a little gaslight action. Oh yeah, and that's another thing too. The owner said it's really hard to find neutral sometimes and y'all saw me just fighting with it there. It is kind of tough. This is a sweet little bike. I don't know if I would ever buy one, but If I'm not at wide open throttle, yeah, that quick shifter is. <laughs> Which I'm sure that's something that can be tuned out easily. Yeah, the brakes are also really good on this thing. 
I mean, they're Brembo's, so of course, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're not going to be trash, that's for sure. Which is pretty cool, you get... For the price you pay for this bike, there is a lot of value in this. Like, you're paying 600 MSRP numbers versus 1,000. You get the Brembo brakes. You get the cool color scheme. You get the, the pride of owning an Italian vehicle like this. You get cruise control. You get navigation. I mean, there's three different power modes. There's dynamic, individual, and I think commute on here that you can kind of play with. Like, there's a lot. And I'm, I think I played with the dash last time. A lot more than I did this time. Um, there's a lot of settings that you can adjust. I don't know. I feel like for the money, this is a great value bike. Like, awesome value. Almost like how an S1000 is. Like, for the money, for that bike, like, that's your best bang for the buck. For 600 I almost feel like this is one of the top contenders as far as bang for your buck, man. Okay. Be a listen to her, listen to her. <laughs> I'm so used to my bikes like hearing that's funny but I can tell you put an exhaust on this thing it's gonna sound good it's got a nice like deep sound to it especially when you get on the throttle it sounds phenomenal But yeah, man, this is a sweet looking bike for sure. Nice looking bike. Like I said, I love the traditional Aprilia headlight here. <laughs> That's pretty cool looking. I'm not going to lie to you. I do wish they had some better color options, but my only gripe with this bike, like I said, is the quick shifter. And that's pretty much it. The interface isn't the easiest to use as far as like getting into the menus and the settings. It's not the most intuitive thing ever especially connecting your phone i remember me and the owner had a hard time doing that last time but once you get used to it i mean you can easily work your way around that as soon as you get used to using it but yeah man awesome bike i recommend it if you are thinking about getting it like i said i can't speak to the reliability aspect of it but yeah good looking bike i know it'd be a good sounding bike comfortable great for commuting it's got all the tech of those higher end sport bikes oh yeah come on baby come on <laughs> i want to just kick me in the neutral what the heck <laughs> all right but that's all i got for you guys if y'all enjoyed that video make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button join the fast lane gang baby <laughs> i'll put you r660 fast lane d we out i appreciate y'all watching I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.